Today we're going to set up a local Drupal 7 installation on your Windows machine so that you can play with and prototype with Drupal right on your desktop. In this video we're going to do two things. Firstly, we'll set up a local server using XAMPP and then we'll complete a standard Drupal 7 installation. So the first thing we're going to do is download XAMPP. Uh, you'll find that at apachefriends.org or you can just use your trusty Google. Once there, find the link for XAMPP for Windows. So XAMPP essentially is a all-in-one, one-stop shop for server components uh, when it comes to Windows and other operating systems. It, it sort of takes out the hassle from installing Apache and adding all these modules onto it, and it has everything that we need to run Drupal 7, so it's a very quick way to get up and running, especially if you're just interested in running a local development server so you can prototype and play around with things. Um, once you're on this page, take heed to this notice here. There's a Microsoft redistributable that we need before we can proceed with installing XAMPP. So click on that link, give this a go. It's only a couple of megabytes. It'll only take a few seconds to go through. I already have it installed, so I'm just going to go back here. Now, we're really just interested in the main XAMPP installation at this point. So find the link for the download, and we'll get the regular installer. That'll do us just fine. So this is about 100 megabytes, which shouldn't take too long to download. I've actually already downloaded it, so I'm not going to let this go through. I'm just going to go back here, open up my downloads, and open up the executable. So you might see this error pop up when you after you select your language, especially if you're using a recent version of Windows. Um, it's just letting us know not to install this in program files. We should be fine otherwise. So there's a few options. You can look through them here. You could also just go right through. Um, by default, everything will be checked. I'm going to uncheck a couple things. I don't need the FTP server, for example, and I'm not going to be using any mail. So I'll leave those two things unchecked. And I would suggest leaving this in the default installation folder, which is going to be C XAMPP. If you need to change it, do keep it something that's outside of program files, as we just mentioned. After that runs for a moment, you should arrive at the completion screen, and we'll just hit finish. It'll give you the option of managing the different services right away, and that is something that we do want to do. Um, what that does is it starts the control panel, which is, you'll see this icon, you should see this in your notification panel, and then you'll also have the control panel pop up right away. So let's go ahead and start both the Apache and the MySQL modules. So now our server is running, um, but before we go check that out, let's also open the configuration. And we're going to set the auto start of modules. So by checking these boxes right here, the next time that we open the XAMPP control panel, these services will, au will automatically start. So now that these are running, we should be able to go to our browser and type in localhost bringing us to the XAMPP page. You might actually see a language introduction, like a splash page first. Just go ahead and select the language that you require, and then you should be in. Uh, the first thing you want to check out is the status page, which should show you that MySQL, PHP, these things are activated. So yeah, this looks good. Uh, we haven't turned on Tomcat, if you recall. And moving down, we can jump right into PHP My Admin under Tools. And this is where we manage our MySQL databases. So now what we're going to do is create a database. Click on Databases and type in the name of the database. I'm just going to go with Drupal. And our database has now been created. So that's all we need to do right now in phpMyAdmin. Once that's finished, we can head over to Drupal.org and get ourselves a copy of Drupal. So this is the download page for Drupal. Um, just like any module or theme page, you'll see that there's recommended releases and development releases. Uh, the dev releases are, of course, always ahead of the curve. And there are some instances where you'll prefer a dev release to a st standard recommended release. Um, but you'll have a specific reason. And since we don't have a specific reason in this case, we're going to go ahead and just take 715, which is the latest version of Drupal 7 available here. Simply extract 
the Drupal 715 folder and bring it over to your XAMPP folder, which is C, XAMPP is the, that's the default installation path that we use. And in that folder, you should be able to find htdocs. This is sort of your document root for your server. Uh, it's very similar to if you have experience with shared hosting, for example, your www folder or your public HTML folder. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just paste, since I copied, and you can see I have Drupal 715 folder moving over. And I'm gonna rename this just to be something easier to access to Drupal. You can use any project name here. And this, now what we're looking at is a full Drupal platform. Of course, it hasn't been configured or installed yet. So that's our next task. Um, but before we go back to our browser, enter the sites folder and you're gonna find in default, a file called default.settings.php. Before we can actually proceed to the installation, we need to make a copy of this file and we'll rename it to settings.php. So this is the file that Drupal will attempt to edit, hopefully successfully edit, and uh, put in all the, the various configuration details that are needed to do things like access the server and um, also tell Drupal what its base path is, which is the address that we'll be accessing the Drupal install from. So we'll leave that, that, that just like that for now and go back to our browser. And we should find that typing in localhost slash, in this case, Drupal, as that's what I renamed the folder to, loads the installation profile selection screen. So voila, here it is. Um, so we'll just continue along this route. We're going with the standard installation here. The minimal is just like it sounds. It's quite minimal. Standard will create a few base content types for us and other features. And we'll stick to English for our, in our cases here. So we're gonna be using MySQL, so we'll leave that just as it is. And what we need to do now is type in the database name that we created earlier in PHP My Admin, which in this case is Drupal. Now, I haven't actually configured a password for MySQL, and we're gonna to attempt to just go through it without one. Um, by default, XAMPP does not provide a password and root has no password. Of course, this is incredibly insecure, but since we're only running this as a local development server, I'm not particularly concerned about it. So what you'll see now is Drupal's running through all the different modules that are included as part of a standard profile. And once this finishes, we should be brought to our configuration screen uh, where we'll enter a few things like the name of the website that we're building and the contact information for the administrator. On this page, we'll just be entering a few details. Um, name your site, I'm gonna call this the Drupal Tap Sandbox. Uh, provide an email address. This is what you'll see in the, the from portion of any uh, emails that are sent out from this server. Set your username. This is for your user, your first user, which is your super user, it's your administrator. Uh, it has permissions to do just about everything. So you wanna make sure that you remember those details because that's what you'll be using to log in the first time. And you can go ahead and set your time zone to something that suits your fancy. This of course is changeable later. And save and continue. Congratulations, you have installed Drupal. So let's visit our new site. And this is it, our fresh installation of Drupal 7. It is running on top of a local development server, as you can see, localhost slash Drupal. And all of that is powered by our trusty XAMPP 
down here. Thanks for watching everyone. If you have any questions, please let me know. Any suggestions are also welcome as this is my first video that I'm uploading and hope to hear from you.